But if you have a, an existing organization that was created before, I believe, 2022 in December, I think. Oh, it's yeah. relatively yeah. recent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was before, this will be checked because it was the default behavior before. So there's still a lot of companies that are vulnerable to this and we find it a lot in, in our in our audits. Sweet. Thanks so much. Super happy to be joining both of you fellows one more time, Ignacio and Carlos, all the great folks rocking over at Halborn. And we've been chatting a little bit about CICD, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, however you want to interpret that CD last end of it. Uh, and in the last little showcase, we got to see I believe that was, what, direct pipeline poisoning as one of the attacks? And that is just the tip of the iceberg, from what I understand. You were telling me, like, hey, there's a whole wide world. Hack tricks in the cloud book showcases so many other options, so many of the things we can do. Uh, and I thought we could pull the thread a little bit further, maybe push back the envelope and ask, Carlos, Ignacio, what's next? What other cool tricks do you mind showing me? <laughs> so um, in the previous video, we maybe cheat a little bit because it was so easy, man. Like it yeah. was so easy. Obviously, there are there are some protections you might be finding place. I, I'm gonna tell you something. Not every company is going to be having these protections, but there might be some protections. Like for example, uh, you might face some. The most common ones in GitHub, I would say, is branch protections and code owner. This basically means that you are going to be limiting who can write to some branches. And obviously, the most protected branch is going to be master or main. Like, you only want certain people to be able to push a code in there. And also, you want some certain amount of people to have review its pull request before pushing the, the content to this branch. So um, I think Ignacio and me would like to show you in this video um, how to configure these kind of protections, but also how to bypass them because, well, at the beginning, GitHub weren't doing very good on, on these protections. And I'm going to tell you that in the past, uh, GitHub releases um, some default security configurations have been fixed. And in new repos, this might be harder, but still in all repos, it's kind of easy to bypass these kind of protections. Cool. I think we can hey, dive right in if you're up for it. I'd love to see some show and tell if we just want to get the ball rolling. Uh, but yeah, I, just as you mentioned, hey, it was kind of easy mode when we had our immediate right access to the whole repository. But now we're going to have a couple more protections in place. And how can you bypass these? Um, so Ignacio is showing his screen right now. I'm going to explain you a little bit. Uh, maybe Ignacio, can you do the, the screen a little bit uh, bigger so so I can read what is happening there? <laughs> um, okay, so obviously the first step you need to do is indicate the, the pattern or usually the branch name that you want to protect. So here you can just write main and we are going to be protecting the, the main branch. And then you have a ton of different configurations. But today we are going to be focusing in the main one that is being used. That is require a pull request uh, before merge. This basically means that um, you need to do a pull request. You cannot directly commit to main. And also you can require approvals. What does this mean? This means that a different user needs to say, hey, I trust this commit. This is okay. I approve that it can be committed into main. And by default, as you can see here, only one approval is going to be required. You could require more, but usually, usually only one is going to be required. Why is this? Because in companies, like if you ask for one required, the guy that is trying to push a code into main need to ask someone, hey, can you review this and approve it? And this is going to take time. So if you increase this number to two or three different persons, you just need to annoy a lot of other person. Mm -hmm. So... To be honest, the maximum I have seen is maybe two, and one is the number in 99% of the cases. Also, and this is a, a fun one, um, so by default, this is not going to work, but if you actually push in this uh, option, this dismiss stale pull request approvals, when new commits are pushed, if you allow this, you basically can hijack another pull request. So you imagine that you, um, so you are the attacker and you see that someone sends a pull request, and you know that you can approve it. So what you can do is you get to that pull request, you put the malicious code, you approve the pull request, and then everything is merged into master. By default, fortunately, GitHub is not going to allow that, and if you update a pull request, another person will need to allow it. 
but there is a button to to well to to authorize this kind of pull request e jacking uh, that fortunately is 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 um, well is disabled. And also something fun is this code owners stuff, which basically is a file inside the repo specifying who is uh, the groups and the users that are code owners of the GitHub repo. This basically let's say that it creates different classes over the repo, and they say if you're a code owner, you're probably going to be having more privileges. Why? Because then you can say, hey, you need one or two approvals, but the approvals must be coming from a code owner. So if you compromise to um, useless or to low-level developer accounts in GitHub, and none of them is code owner, you actually are not going to be able to approve a pull request to compromise the main branch and bypass this protection. But anyway, um, there is another uh, option. So maybe we can just, um, I don't know, Ignacio, do you want to show anything else or is this okay? Uh, just a quick comment on code owners. You can also specify paths in the code owner file. So you can say, okay, if you want to change the pipeline YAML files that we've been poisoning, uh, you need to be uh, in the DevOps GitHub group. For example, that's a common pattern. Uh, this will make it so if you change one of those uh, protected files, specific protected files, uh, you will need a code owner to review that specific file. So it's not only applied to the entire repository. However, blocking people from changing the pipeline uh, YAML file is not enough to prevent poison pipeline executions uh, since there's other ways of, of, like John mentioned, there's also indirect poison pipeline execution. And in this case, it would be something like a command injection inside a make file or, or maybe using Terraform to gain remote code execution. Uh, I'm pretty sure we will look into that in a, an upcoming video. And yeah, we can just finish up the setup here and say create. And now we have a branch protection rule for main. Can we can we also show the setting about allowing the GitHub bot to to uh, well to accept or send pull requests? Yeah, so that would be under Actions General, all the way at the bottom. We have this setting: choose whether GitHub Actions can create pull requests and submit approvals. Uh, so normally, this is if you create a new repo in an empty organization, a new organization, uh, this will be disabled. And it, the, the default will be the safe pattern. So disabled is good, uh, enabled is bad. <laughs> and this, ca this can also be configured at the organization level. Again, by default, if you create a new organization, it will be disabled. But if you have a, an existing organization that was created before, I believe, 2022 in December, I think. Oh, it's yeah, relatively it's recent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's 2022 December. Uh, if it was before, this will be checked because it was the default behavior before. So there's still a lot of companies that are vulnerable to this, and we find it a lot in in our in our audits. How many people know about that? <laughs> Probably not that many. Wow. Okay, this is a good video, guys. <laughs> cool. So we're gonna again go to the repository. I'm just going to do a pull to get Carlos's changes from the attack before. Uh, that's going to get rid of that to uh, avoid having a lot of output. And now I'm going to add a new step. I'm probably actually just going to replace the entire action. Now, I guess it's cool to, to only add a step. So we're just going to copy this step here. Uh, what I just copy pasted is a, a GitHub action from a blog post that will, with permissions to write in the pull request, this is necessary to, to do this, uh, but you can configure this without having any special permissions. Hmm. Uh, we're going to run on a pull request, and we're going to submit a curl request to the GitHub API using the GitHub Actions secret token. So this will be the way that GitHub Actions authenticates to the GitHub Action API for everything. So since we have write access to the pull request, we're able to submit an event of approve, and this will create a, a review in the pull request, allowing us to merge. It's like the GitHub Actions will approve the request for us. So we spin up a, a pull request with our malicious change. GitHub Actions approves it for us, and we can merge it because it now has one approval. 
So just getting the permissions. Now I'm going to ask an awful question, but have you ever seen this in the real world? Is this one a, a realistic or? I, I, this tell is you, I tell you that is completely realistic completely what? realistic because it's, it's what I told you, man. Like when people configure branch protections, they are going to be asking just for, for one review. And if you actually have the GitHub token, you already have that review. <laughs> and actually this can be even more fun because, um, in this case, the, the Git bot is going to be approving the request. But now imagine that you need a code owner to approve the request and you compromise it, a code owner account. What you can do is get the Git bot, create the pull request, and then you approve it yourself. So it can even allow you to bypass code owner's protection. Wow. Okay. And this will just naturally be in the repository. Like you have not tampered with it, or you are in the perspective of you tampering this right now. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm okay. currently adding, I decided to go on a different file instead of okay. uh, adding to the upload one. But yeah, I'm just adding a new GitHub action, uh, so a new run, a new job, which is called approve. So if wow. now I make some changes to index, approve my pull request. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a git add. I'm actually going to try to push this to to main just to show that GitHub actions is working. Uh, GitHub branch protection is working, and now I git push. And this should fail. Uh, mm. yeah, it says that we need one approval. So what I'm going to do is do git switch. Uh, just name a branch. So now we're in the dodgy branch with the same changes that we had before. And I can just do a git push. And that branch didn't have to exist. Like you can just choose an arbitrary one. And it yeah, I just create a new branch. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I need to set the upstream. And this should work. And we should be able to see here. Uh, a little pop-up saying that there is a new branch. Cool. Going to the branch. Uh, let's There's try to... No new commits. Did I forget something? I'm confused. Is this it, it actually pushed to main. <laughs> it pushed to main? Yeah. Branch protection is doing its thing. Maybe because I'm the admin of the... Let me test that. Yeah. I do want to keep this footage because I think that's kind of actually a little bit neat. Uh, so just to recap with a little bit of air coverage while Ignacio does his thing, uh, we thought we had branch protection set up where we were not going to be able to actually push to main uh, the normal, natural, like default branch of a GitHub repository. So we thought, all right, we'll take another route. Let's create our dodgy branch where we can do some shady hacker stuff. But when we were just testing the capability to push to main, the console, the command line, the terminal told us, no, you need a reviewer, you can't do it. But it seemed like it let us do it because we were admin. And that kind of threw us for a loop here. Now it looks like we toggled the setting, do not bypass this no matter what, even if I am the admin. And that is where we're seeing now the errors coming through. Uh, and we are not allowed, really, absolutely, actually, not allowed to push to main. Yeah, it, it does seem that we needed to click this button in order to disable uh, us from pushing directly to main. I don't know if that's new behavior. Uh, I've never experienced that in the past. So cool. Uh, now we do have uh, branch protection enabled. So I'm going to go back to my dodgy branch. And in my dodgy branch, I have my files. Uh, this is already pushed, so it's not uh, we don't need to go over it again, but I should be able to go to Doji and it, it won't let me because we're still one step ahead in, in main. I need mm. to, I think just make one more modification and then do another push, right? Yeah. Let me go ahead and bypass that setting again. Not as smooth as we would help, but can you explain why you had to toggle that off one more time, even when you're trying to push to Doji this time? So, uh, I need to reset main back to the original state in order okay. for to be able to do a pull request from doji because gotcha. the change was already in main uh, i cannot push to uh, i cannot submit a pr from doji to main because the change already exists could you have created yet another branch uh, with different content yes yeah and that's all right that's just kind of for our own sake of our own understanding yeah. we can actually see here in the output of git if we learn to to read uh, we just <laughs> tend to skim through the screen it says bypassed a rule nice <laughs> so the information was there we just didn't look close enough okay so we should be back to 
how it was before. And there should only be one file here in the main branch. Okay, so we're doing this again. <laughs> have you have you configured again the branch protection properly? No, and that's a good point. Uh, let's configure this again. Branch protection, main. Now we know this process inside and out. This is <laughs> yes, cool. So we're going to create the the dodgy file. Quick copy paste of our approve action. Okay. Uh, Let's update this too. And now, even though I'm in this branch, I can do an add. I can do a commit. Now, this is just a sanity check. Branch protection is on. We cannot bypass it, and we will not be allowed to push to main. Exactly. So we're expecting to see an error. This is the error we're expecting. Cool. So now we do a get switch. Now we sidestep. To uh, the branch already exists, so I'm just going to call it dodgy2. Uh, and now we can just do a git push with the upstream set to dodgy2. Cool. Nice. So now okay. we should be able to go here and we have the pop-up saying that there's a branch that is available for a pull request. And we can just say, okay, from main, we want to merge into dodgy, uh, sorry, dodgy2 into main. And I'm just going to click on create and this should trigger. Uh, it might take a little bit here, some actions. The first one is approve. And we'll see as soon as approve finishes, we'll have this turn into a green check. Nice. Changes approved. So we've <laughs> successfully bypassed branch protection. And now we can just merge as if someone else had approved it. And that will trigger the other uh, pipeline. So we should now see a merge pull request. And this should be running the upload job, which is copying our new text into the S3 bucket. And when we refresh this, we should see bypass. bypass. Nice. Cool. Have you done this? In the real world, IRL. <laughs> yes, I've done it multiple times. I'm not comfortable enough to do it with clients. I just told <laughs> them that they're vulnerable to this uh, unless they ask me to to actually do the full steps. But uh, this is something that you can detect just from looking at configuration without having to exploit it. So normally, uh, you in a pen test scenario, you won't be exploiting it. Gotcha. Wow. Man. What do you think? Is there more to chat about on this or is that kind of the gist of it? I know we uh, beat a dead horse here trying to get this thing uh, put together for the fireworks, but that makes sense in my mind. Anything else? Um, well, in general, there are other settings that people should be taking a look to in order to well find vulnerabilities. Like this is not the only way to bypass branch protection. Actually, there are there are like 10 more uh in, in hack tricks, you can you can take a look because every kind of setting we will have its kind of bypass. But definitely, uh, GitHub went in the right direction. As Ignacio mentioned, it this change to remove those awful permissions from the Git bot was made at the end of 2020. So before this, you could just run this bypass, and it was always going to be working. And and as you said, most of the people doesn't know, and and this is only for new organizations that is going to be set. So people that is watching this, probably your organization is, is still vulnerable. So just take a look and disable because most companies doesn't need this feature. Just disable this permission from the Git bot. Yeah, the, the setting can be found uh, in your organization settings under actions general and all the way at the bottom. That one's massive. I think that's a serious, like actionable takeaway like right now for just about every person watching if you use GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's super cool. Thanks so much. Uh, wow. I, I, I'm really, re I'm really, really liking this one, especially, I don't know. I know, look, it felt like a stumble, but I think that's where a whole lot of the learning blocks is, especially when we, it was just that simple, stupid checkbox uh, for even bypassing admin access to be able to push to main and knowing about GitHub Actions, the bot being able to approve those or not. Uh, man, the devil's in the details here. So <laughs> thanks so much, gentlemen. I'm excited for the next one. I think we still got a couple bit more on the horizon uh, to see what other damage we can do with the CICD and the pipeline and all here. Uh, but I'm loving, I think we started to crawl. We're almost walking now. We're going to get to be running pretty soon. <laughs> yes, uh, some exciting things are coming for sure. Super cool. Thanks again, Carlos. Thanks, Ignacio. Thank you, Jim. Bye.